Today, we're passing 201 days of war with the terrorist organization Hamas. The war on other fronts is heating up and the IDF is sending a clear message to Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah, you are on the bullseye. Meanwhile, the IDF is making final preparations for a ground operation in Rafah. I'm Yair Pinto and this is your Boots on the Ground report about what is happening in Israel on this 201st day of the war against Hamas, Hezbollah, Iran and all its proxies in the Middle East. Yes, that's right. Today we mark 201 days since the outbreak of the war and the beginning of a different reality for the citizens of the State of Israel. In the Gaza Strip, the IDF has dismantled the power structure of Hamas, defeating the organized brigades in heavy fighting. However, although the organized brigades have been defeated, it is very difficult to completely stamp out an irregular force and every place that had been cleared of Hamas one day can become infested with terrorists again. The civil infrastructure of Hamas has already become a force to be confronted in many places where the IDF concluded large-scale maneuvers weeks ago. However, the war continues and thousands of soldiers are training at bases all over Israel to prepare for the next large maneuver into Rafah, as well as possibly re-entering towns in the center of the Gaza Strip where Hamas has begun to re-emerge. The US is still reviewing the IDF's plans to evacuate hundreds of thousands of Palestinian civilians from Rafah before moving in to confront the remaining Hamas battalions. This plan includes setting up large tent cities for the evacuees to shelter in and several thousand tents have already been set up while more are on the way. The plan to evacuate the civilians from Rafah has been changed several times in consultation with the Americans and they might need to be changed again. The general outline of the plan can be seen, however, and it includes an initial stage where the IDF moves in with large formations to strike a hammer blow against Hamas, then withdraws and make raids as necessary to confront whatever small Hamas units still remain. Another concern the IDF has in the Gaza Strip is the continued firing of rockets into Israel. Just in the last couple of days, barrages were fired towards Sderot and the Ashkelon area. The source of the rockets was in the villages of Bet Hanun and Bet Lachia, in areas where the IDF had already cleared. But because of the extensive tunnel network Hamas has dug under the Gaza Strip, they were able to sneak back into these areas and use them to fire rockets. This scenario is likely to be repeated many times moving forward and so, the IDF will have to continue to make raids and confront the terrorist threats. To sum up, the threat of large Hamas formations operating in the Gaza Strip has been severely degraded through the bravery and sacrifice of the IDF troops. But there is still a problem there because small units and even individual terrorists continue to fire rockets and threaten Israeli communities. The IDF will need to continue monitoring the Gaza Strip to guard against these threats, confronting them when they arise. That still leaves the four battalions that must be destroyed before the job will be completed. The latest intelligence assessment say that two of them are in Rafah, while the other two have been sent further north to Deir El Balach and Nusirat in the center of the Gaza Strip. Here at TBN Israel, we will continue to monitor this situation and keep you updated as the story unfolds. Please keep spreading the truth with us. Take a moment and subscribe to this YouTube channel and follow us on social media. Switching our focus now to the northern arena, the battle against Hezbollah is beginning to resemble a siege and Hezbollah fires a steady steam of rockets precision missiles and suicide drones into the Galilee region every day. This is making it impossible for tens of thousands of Israeli residents of towns, kibbutzim and cities in Galilee to return to their homes, schools and jobs, leaving an entire region of Israel paralyzed. This is even without a major eruption of hostilities. The IDF 
for its part, regularly attacks significant Hezbollah targets along the border and even further north, destroying Hezbollah weapon stockpiles and training centers, as well as eliminating senior terrorist leaders. In many communities around the Gaza border region, life has more or less returned to a normal routine such as what existed before the war broke out. But the reality is still complex and the authorities face many difficulties. Last, but certainly not least, we can never forget the fact that on October 7, 253 men and women were kidnapped from the civilian communities and military bases near the border with Gaza. There are still 133 Israeli hostages being held in the Gaza Strip. We don't know how many of them are still alive and what conditions they are being held in, and there is a widespread concern for their fate. Among the remaining hostages are women, the elderly, and toddlers, with the youngest being Kfir Bibas, who was kidnapped when he was only nine months old. The abductees who were released in earlier deals describe in several interviews the difficult conditions the hostages are suffering, including hunger, lack of water, being held underground in tunnels without oxygen, being abducted in cages, sexual abuse, and psychological abuse. Also, as the days pass, we know it becomes more likely that these hostages will lose the battle to stay alive under these terrible conditions. The IDF has already informed close to 40 families that their loved ones have been murdered in captivity. The negotiations with Hamas over freeing the remaining hostages are stuck. In the shadow of the terrorist organization's insistence on an Israeli commitment to essentially lose the war by withdrawing, handing the Gaza Strip back to Hamas and giving up on all the accomplishments that were won at such a high price. In recent days, we haven't seen much reason for optimism that a deal will be reached soon. To wrap up this summary of events after 201 days of war, I will ask you once again to help us spread the truth by sharing our videos and subscribing to this YouTube channel. This war is fought on multiple fronts, and sadly, Israel is losing the front for the public's opinion, so we need your help in sharing the truth. And the most important thing is prayer. So please join us in prayer for the peace of Jerusalem and for Israel to win against this terrible terrorist organization. Now, with the summary concluded, we need to focus on events in the north. In the past 24 hours, the IDF attacked and eliminated Hussein Ali Azkul, a key operative in the air defense system of the terrorist organization Hezbollah in southern Lebanon. In addition, during the night between Monday and Tuesday, Muhammad Khalil Atiyah, a senior commander in the Radwan forces, was eliminated. Following these strikes, Hezbollah launched several rockets into northern Israel, prompting alarms in several Israeli communities. This leaves Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah with a lot to think about. He knows that the elimination of all these senior field commanders means that Israeli intelligence is watching his organization closely, and in the event of a major outbreak of hostilities, he will be in the crosshairs. The IDF will know exactly where he is at all times, and they will be ready to hit him if and when a big war starts. This must be very difficult for him to see how vulnerable he is, despite his habit of spending all his time in underground bunkers. This gives him many reasons to avoid escalating the hostilities against Israel, as he knows he is in a personal danger. The same is true for all of these Hezbollah commanders, who have seen their friends get eliminated one by one, leaving them to wonder which one of them will be next. I'm sure they all want these hostilities to end as soon as possible, instead of escalating into something even worse. However, Nasrallah also knows that he cannot be seen as backing down in the face of Israeli pressure, as this will make him lose face in front of the whole Muslim world, especially his patrons, the Islamic Republic of Iran. 
Therefore, he continues to fire into Israel, including a recent UAV strike in Western Galilee. This strike was the closest so far to hit near the city of Haifa. A Hezbollah attack on Haifa would be a major escalation, so please be in prayer about this situation. Please keep spreading the truth, take a moment and click on the subscribe button and follow us on social media. I would also ask you to please take an active part in spreading the truth by donating to our work and helping us create more videos by clicking the link below or going to our website at www.tbn.org Israel. Switching our focus once again, we need to talk about the demonstrations against Israel that have been taking place on several U.S. university campuses in recent days. First of all, before even mentioning the demonstrations that have been raging in recent days at Columbia University in New York City and the demonstrations at other universities across the U.S., I need to correct something that is often said about them. Despite the description that is often repeated, these demonstrations are not pro-Palestinian. They are actually pro-terrorism and anti-Israel. The demonstrators never even pretend to offer any solutions to the problems facing Palestinians in Gaza or anywhere else. They are all about expressing hatred and contempt for Israel and demand for our destruction. They include statements of support for murder, rape, and terror of Jews and Israelis, sympathy for monsters and criminals, and contempt for Israel and even for their own country, the United States of America. Although the demonstrators are often led by professors with a long history of anti-Israel activities, the young students who make up the bulk of the demonstrators are not blameless. They often have no idea what the slogans they're chanting even mean, and many of them probably couldn't find this country on a map of the world if their lives depended on it. They don't know what they're talking about, and they don't even care. They're just out on the streets, marching, and carrying on for the thrill of it and for the emotional release they get from expressing outrage at something. The real-world consequences of what they're doing are of no interest to them. They just want to enjoy being part of the hate fest. For many, there is also the satisfaction they get from an expression of socially acceptable anti-Semitism. This has come and gone several times throughout history, and here we see it happening once more. There is nothing ideologically special or even specific about this manifestation of anti-Semitism. They are just the latest example of the pure hatred of Jews despite the cosmetic differences these demonstrations might have to pass examples of this phenomenon. With all of this in mind, I will ask you once more to help us spread the truth. This war is not just being fought with kinetic weapons on the battlefields of Gaza and Lebanon. It is a spiritual war being fought with spiritual weapons. And one tool that we as believers can use is prayer. To pray effectively, People must know the truth, and that's what we do here at TB in Israel, by creating these daily updated reports from Israel so that you will know how to pray. So please help us get the truth to more people so they can join us in prayer for the situation in Israel, for the IDF soldiers, for the hostages, and the most important thing is for the peace of Jerusalem. We just celebrated the holiday of Passover. And I wanted to wish all of you a happy Passover and remember that despite all the enemies that come against the people of Israel and against you personally, God is on our side and we will win. Hello, this is Mati here in Jerusalem with TBN Israel. This is Yair Pinto from TBN Israel here in Jerusalem. TBN Israel is keeping viewers informed with Israel-focused news, culture, and what God is doing in this land. Support TBN Israel today online at tbn.org Israel. Thank you.